Hi, everybody. Mitch Tannenbaum here. Thanks for joining me today. This is the security news update for May 7th, 2023. In the security and privacy alerts section, um, I had a, a, a personal experience this week with my uh, ISP, my internet provider. Um, and, uh, you know, you sometimes got to wonder whether your managed service provider, internet provider really cares much about your security. In this particular case, I got an email from them saying, hey, we want to send you a new piece of network equipment. Uh, no charge. Uh, is that okay? And I said, sure. And I got it and sat on my desk for a couple of weeks. And, and um, you know, all that was probably a month or two. Uh, and then I get an, an alert from Cisco saying that there's this vulnerability, um, like a 9.8 out of 10. Uh, and I do some research, and it turns out it's this particular piece of equipment. And so I call the ISP and ask them about that, and they said, well, you know, um, we don't know why the guys decided to send it out. So clearly, they're not telling the truth, um, and they don't care too much about my security or your security. So, um, you know, I guess you're kind of on your own, um, and certainly in terms of your ISP and MSP, you know, you probably ought to, you know, check and make sure that things are being done the way you want it to be done. Uh, next, uh, a multiple verified Twitter accounts, verified means they're, that their credit card cleared, um, uh, warned of a fake imminent nuclear strike. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, that would be a concern, I think, of, of folks, um, you know, I, I guess the moral of the story is, uh, especially today, you know, don't count on the uh, verifiedness of a verified account because apparently it doesn't mean much. And Twitter uh, did not take those posts down. Also, uh, researchers have published uh, new border gateway protocol routing flaws in open source, a particular piece of open source BGP software. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, the bad guys can take over your network. Uh, so that's not a good thing, obviously. And, uh, you know, there is no fix for it. There is no workaround at this point. I'm sure there will be one. But, you know, the challenge with open source software is that people have day jobs and, um, you know, this may not be their highest uh, priority. So, um, you know, if you use FR Routing's BGP product, of course, you don't know what's inside the box that someone else sold you or you bought um, necessarily. So that's a challenge all by itself. In the reference department, the SANS Institute has released the first three volumes of its uh, uh, Industrial Control System Cybersecurity Field Manual. Great uh, reading. They're fairly short. They're about uh, 16 pages a piece each volume. And so whether you are responsible for industrial control systems or whether you have some in your business or you just want to learn some more about it, good reading. Uh, also, um, uh, the organization Privacy for Cars with the number four has released a tool to help people understand what data your car is collecting. It's kind of cool. I, I tried it on a particular car and sure enough, it's collecting location data and identifiers and all kinds of things. They share it with affiliates and service providers and the government. Um, and there's some things they don't talk about, like whether they sell to data brokers. In the legislative and legal activities department, uh, CISA has released a draft secure software development lifecycle self-attestation form. Uh, this is going to be required for people who are selling software to the government or to people who sell to the government, or for that matter, probably who sell software to large companies. Um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. This is a draft. They're accepting comments until the end of June, uh, but I'm guessing it's not going to change a whole lot. So you might want to look at that and see whether you're comfortable uh, having one of your executives sign that. Uh, next, uh, uh, courts have ruled that uh, Merck, uh, the big pharmaceutical company, their insurer has to pay them $1.4 billion after the not Petya uh, crisis from a few years ago. This is how long it takes lawsuits to get resolved. Um, 
they are uh, their their um, insurance company said that well this was a government sponsored attack therefore since there's an act of war exclusion um, you know we're not covering you of course it's not so fast that's not exactly what it says now what we are seeing is that uh, the insurance companies are tightening up the language uh, of their uh, state sponsored activities exclusion so uh, be careful read the policy. Uh, because many things can be considered state sponsored nowadays. Uh, next and last in the in the legal department, uh, Operation Spector uh, sees fifty three million dollars and arrests uh, two hundred eighty eight people in a dark web drug bust, which is great. Unfortunately, they need to do about one of those a day instead of one of those every month or every couple of months. Um, but they made a lot of arrests, including a bunch of people in the United States. You know, you think these these folks would figure out that you know. If you're going to go off and do this kind of thing, you shouldn't be in a country uh, that's friendly to us, and you certainly shouldn't be here. But apparently, they don't understand that. Uh, next, in the education department, the Department of Justice apparently they're now admitting detected the Solar Winds hack months earlier than first disclosed, but they didn't understand what it was they saw. Uh, so, in fairness to them, you know that that probably happens a fair amount. Um, in hindsight, it's always 2020. Uh, but now you can read about it and you can become much more educated. Hopefully when uh, the next attack comes and attacks your company, uh, you'll be better prepared. Um, in the breaches department, and there is a lot of them this week, uh, the FBI says uh, don't pay ransoms, right? Uh, but the San Bernardino sheriff is now admitting that he paid a $1.1 million ransom. Um, I'm guessing, although they're not saying, that this is because amongst the stuff that was uh, encrypted was evidence of crimes. And if they didn't get the evidence decrypted, then all those people would go free more than likely. That's my guess. Um, the, uh, you know, the alternative is that he felt sorry for some Russian hacker. Uh, and hopefully that's not the case. Uh, but of course, at this point, you know, if I were the um, a defense counsel, um, you know, I'd go off and say, well, you know, prove to me that this evidence wasn't altered, uh, which I don't think you could do. Um, next, um, there is a, um, a, a fake Postal Service job site based in Pakistan that's leaking personal data and credit cards. Apparently, there's a lot of scams like this. They claim that if you pay them, between 40 and 100 bucks, they will help you get a job with the Postal Service, which anybody can apply, and they don't have any ins. Uh, but, um, the, you know, the FTC has sued a number of firms like this going way back to the 1990s, but their legal process is very clunky. And so these guys, the bad guys, move a lot faster. Uh, this particular breach exposed data on about 900,000 people. Uh, next, um, IT giant Bitmark in Germany shut down, including entire data centers. Um, they are the uh, largest or one of the largest uh, service providers for German health insurance companies. Uh, at this point, uh, they're claiming that no customer data was compromised. Who knows whether that's true or not? Uh, and, but they also don't know how long it's going to take them to recover. Uh, next, like I said, there's a lot of breaches this week. Uh, Merit Service and Merit Capital, uh, who as a business like the Panama Papers law firms, uh, register shell companies um, was breached. They exposed uh, data on about 400,000 companies. These are, uh, you know, exposed things like the beneficial owners who are trying to hide, just like the people who register in Panama, uh, transfers of shares, banking documents. Um, my guess is law enforcement is uh, quite thrilled. Uh, next, um, the city of Dallas uh, it was hit by a ransomware attack. It, uh, it took them back to the early 20th century. The police, is, police are dispatching uh, police officers using walkie-talkies. Um, and at this point, they're writing things down on pieces of paper. And hopefully when they get things back together, they will um, uh, be able to go off and enter the computer and maybe actually even, um, I don't know, solve some crimes. Also in the municipal department, the city of Lowell, Massachusetts, which is a lot smaller than the city of Dallas, was hit by a ransomware attack. Um, the city, however, unlike Dallas, had segmented their network. 
so police and fire uh, and 911 are still working. Uh, the attack happened in April, and the crook said they will release the data on May 10th if the ransom isn't paid. So that's just a couple of days. So we shall see what happens. Um, they claim to have personal data, passports, government IDs, financial records, other files. Uh, passports are really hard to replace, get new passport numbers. So um, it'll be interesting. Um, on the daily side, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the the bad guys, Russia, China, folks like that, uh, with their information, disinformation, information warfare operations. Uh, <clears throat> but we run them too, and everybody does. Uh, here's a story uh, talking about uh, uh, our U.S. Army's effort in that department. And uh, to be honest with you, um, not so good. The, they, maybe they need to take some training from the Chinese. Uh, but still, it's interesting to learn about what we're doing. Um, and and uh, maybe we'll get better. Hopefully we'll get better. <laughs> uh, next, um, you know, AI is moving at warp speed, as we all know. Uh, and we're seeing new tools like, you know, it seems like every day. Uh, but we're also starting to see a few tools that may help to prevent mistakes. So hopefully that's, in fact, what happens. Um, but this one is designed to um, uh, redact sensitive data that you uh, accidentally try to send to your favorite AI. So um, hopefully we'll see more of those kind of tools. Um, next, uh, the Baker Hostler law firm uh, puts together every year a report on the incidents that they investigate on behalf of their clients. Uh, <clears throat> this year is about 1,100 cases uh, that they investigated. Uh, I don't think the results will make you sleep better at night, uh, but it is interesting to see the breakdown of the different kinds of attacks and stuff. So that data is now available. Um, and lastly, in the uh, news bites for the week, um, Government contractors apparently are also uh, affected by the TikTok ban. So if you are a government contractor, you might want to learn about that. Um, Google and Apple are actually working together, would you believe that, uh, to stop AirTag stalking. Um, I guess once the problem gets big enough, um, they can get past their pet rivalries to actually deal with the problem. Uh, Google is going to remove the uh, secure icon, the padlock, uh, because it never really did mean anything was secure. Um, and now, you know, something like 98% of the websites uh, get that padlock. So uh, they're going to replace it with something which basically says uh, the traffic is encrypted by somebody. We don't know who. We don't know whether you're talking to the right website, but the traffic is encrypted. Uh, <clears throat> Next, we should expect more of this. Uh, Pornhub uh, says that if you're in Utah, you cannot access their site. Um uh, and that is because of the requirement to go uh, do identification, age identification. Um, we're also seeing some other folks, for example, Wikipedia is threatening to leave uh, the UK over the same thing. Um, and, and, you know, I think sites are going to have to decide whether the risk of, um, you know, misidentifying the age of somebody. Uh, and you wouldn't think that Wikipedia is a problem, but, the you know, obviously they don't have much adult content, I don't think. Um, but they're saying you're requiring us to collect and maintain a lot of sensitive personal information. We just don't want to do it. We're not going to do it. Um, and, and that's kind of the same thing with regard to Pornhub. So, you know, we may see a lot of sites just decide in worth the risk, right? Because if you screw it up, you can get sued and that may not be worthwhile. So the answer is just block people from, from that geolocation um, and lastly, uh, National Guard to the Rescue, uh, interesting story, um, the, uh, a school district got hit by a cyber attack, um, and uh, uh, they called the governor. Um, the governor sent out the National Guard, not the guys with the guns, the guys with the, the iPads and the, and, the, and the geeky pocket protectors. Um, and they are helping the school, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not a school district, it's in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, it's a housing authority. Um, and they're helping the housing authority uh, you recover from the cyber attack. So it's a great deal because the housing authority is getting help. They clearly, you know, are over their head. Um, and uh, the National Guards people are getting some real world experience 
that can help them later in their career. So that's all all good. Now, obviously, it'd be better if they could, you know, keep the bad guys out. But once the bad guys get in, it's kind of a cool deal that they're doing that. Um, and so uh, that's kind of it for today. If you are worried about whether your managed service provider, or internet service provider, or really worried about your cybersecurity, um, feel free to contact us and we'll see uh, if we can help you with that. Until next time, stay safe. Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions offers the complete cybersecurity program for small to medium-sized businesses. They include everything needed to secure your business and meet compliance requirements. Visit our website at turnkeycybersecurityandprivacysolutions.com to learn more.